Greetings. Oh, I feel like it's been so long since I've been on YouTube. I don't know if it has been long or time has stopped for me or what, but I feel like um, time has just gotten away from me. And um, I realized Maven is just around the corner and I wasn't really ready for it. So I wanted to take a few minutes today and as I'm doing a little prepping for Mabon, um, I thought I would catch up with you on video, um, let you in on what I'm doing to prepare for Mabon. Um, first things first, I always, if you know from my past videos, you probably know that I always prepare a an incense blend appropriate for my observation of the Sabbath. And this year, my um, my incense blend for Maybon is different than it was in past years. That's always the case, but it's appropriate for what's going on with me at this time. So first I'm going to just show you what I'm doing with the incense, and then I'm going to get this out of the way, talk to you about something else I'm doing as well. I'll talk to you a little bit more about Maybon, um, actually what I wanted to say about it. So I'm going to try to make this a brief video. I know nobody has time these days to sit and watch long ones, but um, so I'll do my best. But you know I'm I'm pretty long-winded. Um, um, first of all, in here I have the first few things that I have put in to my um, my mortar here are frankincense, which I use frankincense and cumin. I put a, a combination of frankincense and cumin together first. Um, frankincense I use all the time, almost in my blends, and cumin, the combination of the two is a very powerful protection um, blend and for me it's really important now because I've been a little lax you know I've told you in the past that we used to be very diligent or normally we're very diligent about putting up protections around our property usually at the full moon we do we add things to our boundary we also do things um, at different times of the year we uh, add other protections in the form of maybe witches stars or whatever We've been a little lax with that in the last few months, so the incense blend that I'm cooking up for this Sabbath is going to be a little super powerful. And one of the ways to make it powerful um, is that combination of frankincense and cumin, which is really a good combination. I do have to say, I love frankincense and I love cumin. I don't really like the smell, <laughs> the smell that I'm getting from it right now. Um, just the two. So I'll be happy to add um, more things. You recall that I've also said, oh, I love the, the smells, the odors, the fragrances, I guess is what I should be saying. The fragrances from the incense blends that I make. Um, I'm not a fan for that reason. I'm really not a fan of commercial incense cones or sticks. There is a time when I do use those, but mostly always on my altars and in my home as much as possible I use my own blends which I make and I just love the lingering <laughs> the lingering fragrances that that result that result from those blends they stay through the season and then as I as the wheel turns and it's the next season and I come up with a new blend that I use the old blend is still sort of lingering around and the new comes in and oh my it just it's just it's very rich a very rich smell I'm always excited to see what happens. Okay, the next thing I'm going to add to this, anyway, I told you, okay, I have frankincense and cumin. I'm going to put in some chamomile flowers. Um, chamomile is really good, also protection. It's good. Chamomile is very good for um, removing hexes or spells, if you have any of those on you. I don't know if I have any on me, but from time to time, I really do, I really do believe it's possible. <laughs> So, so I'm going to put that in there. Also, chamomile is very healing, just like we know chamomile tea is very soothing. Chamomile, as, a, an, an, as an ingredient in incense blend, promotes um, healing, spiritual healing as well. So that's very important. So that's um, the chamomile flowers, and that goes in. And really, like I said, there's really no, I've told you before, I don't have any recipes, like how many parts of this, how many parts of that. It's just what I feel is right. You know, it's it's a very personal thing. Um, okay, benzoin. 
which is an odd thing. This is a resin. A resin. Um, I don't know exactly where I got turned on to it, but I really do like to add it. I add it very often to my blends. Um, I'm not sure what it smells like. To be honest, it sort of smells like this room. <laughs> I guess that's because I do add it often. But it's, um, it, it helps to relieve um, anxiety. It also is good for um, uh, success with intellectual matters. And I'll get into that a little bit later, I think. You know, we have our own business here in the home, and, and I want some new ventures. I have, ooh. Um, some of you might recall that I have my new venture with my tarot readings, which, by the way, thank you very much to those of you who have signed on for those. There's still time if you want to get in on the action. Um, I'm sort of going into October because I had some people that really needed them in October. But I'm finding so far the results to be really satisfactory. This is again my um, experiment I'm doing with combining the tarot with the Lenormand cards. Anyway, so anyway, the Benzwin is in here and that's really good for success with intellectual matters. So maybe that's going to help me even more with my tarot venture. Um, it also, uh, like I said, it relieves anxiety and stress. And if any of you are in business for yourself and have a home business, you know, boy, they can be very, very stressful times. <laughs> okay, the next thing that's going in is, this is a marigold flower. Um, this is left over from last year. If you recall last year, I had a Day of the Dead altar for Samhain and um, I'm going to add lots of this to it because this is sort of, this is last year's flower getting ready to come up. And then, of course, it's at a Samhain this year. We will have, we will have new marigolds added. But, but um, miracles are really good to give you protection while sleeping. And if you will recall the stories that I told you before about the Day of the Death celebrations, the... Um, they're used in those celebrations to help guide the dead back to the living during that time when the curtain is very fine, the marigolds. So, for us, it will help us, perhaps when we're sleeping. And this is big flowers. Now, I don't mind having big pieces in my, in my uh, incense blend. So, I will just, I'll tear them up, but you know, it, it still burns very fine. They're very dry. And right now I'm just, I'm not giving it all the attention I need to to grind it up because you really don't want to watch me doing that. I just want to show you everything that goes in it. And then when I get off camera, I'll finish it up and grind it really nice and a little bit finer. But like I said, these are going to stay, you're going to still be able to see the petals in there. They'll just be smaller. Okay. The only reason I want them smaller really is it gives it a better blend. Okay. Um, and not, the next ingredient that I'm going to put in here is meadow sweet, and I have not used meadow sweet too often in the past, but I find that I really like it, and it's very good. It's very good for um, relieving tension, but it's also, especially household tension stresses and increased prosperity in the home. Again, all these in line with our with our with our business and I'm just going to keep this tag with it until I get it in a jar. Most of my things I do transfer to jars. Except when they're little bitty packages like this I don't bother because I only really get a couple uses out of that. But most things get transferred into some kind of a bigger container. So anyway there's the meadow sweet and then I'm going to put in uh, something that I usually always use when conjunction with the frankincense and that is myrrh. The, the combination of frankincense and myrrh is just glorious. And um, I'm not going to use it all because I want to remind myself I need to get more. Um, myrrh increases the power of the incense again. And it promotes peace and it promotes healing. Now, just like if you're a cook, I'm going to give you a little bit of a clue when you're mixing incense this way. You know, when you're if you're grinding... I don't know if any of you ever did it, but if you ever make paste, like a garlic paste, you want to grind up cloves of garlic this way, you need to add coarse salt in with it. 
and that makes a tooth so it's not so slippery as the oil is released from the garlic. You try to grind that and it just, your, your pestle goes all over the place. You put some coarse salt in there with it and that gives it a tooth and it's easier to grind. The same thing happens here with, with um, when you're grinding your incense. You're adding these, some of these big resins and you know when some with the fine powders and some of the others you need a tooth you need something to uh for the, to hold on to when you're grinding okay and this in the very bottom the frankincense that was on the very bottom is giving me something to um catch on you know the pestle on with okay anyway okay next quick 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 mirror and then finally the very last thing i think frankincense to Frankincense, cumin, chamomile, benzoin, marigold, meadow sweet, myrrh, which is white rose. <laughs> uh, you might have known this little quirk I have about rose. I do have different kinds of rose. Um, I have friendship rose. I have love's red rose. I have all different kinds of rose petals depending on where they came from and what I want them to use for. Rose, we know, is very good um, for domestic peace, for happiness. Which is white rose is something that I got from my neighbor who I believe is also a witch. She's a very powerful woman. And she gave us these roses at one time. And I use these when I want an extra boost. I have saved these petals. I have a witch's white, which is pink, <laughs> which is red. Um, they, they, when I want an extra boost to my incense, I go to these. Okay, so anyway, I have everything in my pestle. I will continue later grinding, grinding, grinding. And I will pull some of it apart and then this will be my blend which will go on my altar for Maybon. My old anything left, I don't know if I have anything left from the last one, but anything left from the last remaining incense blend left over from Lamas will go into our ash, into our ash combination. I've talked to you about that in the, in the past which we use that to spread in our, as a protection. Anyway, um, that's all I want to talk about that. I'm going to move this aside because I wanted to talk a little bit more about Maybon. Okay, Maybon, everybody knows this is um, the, uh, it's also called the autumnal equinox. It's the time along with the spring equinox or a sorrow when day and night are absolutely equal, of equal length. That is the two days of the year when night and day are in equal, they're in balance. Balance. Maybon is the second of the harvest festivals. Um, it usually is very, it's unusually appropriate for me this year because my garden has been very slow going this year. Um, most of the true harvesting is just now starting to happen in my garden. Um, so it's, it's also a good time um, for making a personal harvest, a personal harvest, not just a physical harvest in the garden, but a personal harvest. This is the time I like to check on progress that I have made on any goals that I have set for myself in the year, beginning with Imolk and um, all the excitement of the potential. Do you remember how at Imolk we say, oh, we're so excited, we see the... We start to see the return of the light. We start to see life coming back. We get excited about our gardens. We get excited. We plan things. We get totally caught up in it. Ready, set, let's get going, go. And now here we are at Mabon where we look back and say, did I achieve my goals? Did I do what I wanted to do? And I have to say, this year I totally sucked it. I don't know what happened, but it was just a total, I look back at the summer, I go, are you serious? What did I do this summer? What in the hell did I do? My garden usually, if any of you have ever read my um, Good Wife's Garden post, my blog, oh, I usually have, you know, this time of the year, I'm buried in tomatoes, I'm buried in squash, I'm buried in, in cucumber, I'm buried in all these plants and I'm just, I'm just canning, 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 making jams, making this very few and this year we were so desperate we put together money and we built these beautiful raised beds and we put a lot of money into them and we put a lot of money into soil that we thought because you know we have chickens but our chickens are still very young 
and they were not giving they're not at the point where they're helping us with the garden yet so we really went commercially tried to go commercially organic took us uh, some bad advice somewhere and our gardens are just sitting there looking at us for most of the summer most of the things just did not make it they're starting now to come in but again now we're getting to the time of the year our light is we don't have as much light during the day so some things that we're not going to get a big crop of it'd be good to know i've got <laughs> i've got cantaloupes everywhere and i have um I've had good luck with some cucumbers, and I do have some zucchinis, but the tomatoes are very sad, and some of the other squashes are just never happened, and our potatoes didn't happen, and oh, I don't know, it's it's very disappointing. So we've had those kind of woes. We've had money woes, you know. Uh, we have our own business. This has been a very slow summer, very slow, very, you know, expensive, a lot of expenses. Expenses have gone up. Um, it's been disappointing so to the fact that we had to cancel two trips that we had been planning for the summer we weren't able to do those for the first time ever i am experiencing health problems i don't normally i mean they're not nothing to worry about but i'm usually you know i'm a i'm a heavy woman i'm a i'm overweight but i am a health usually pretty healthy woman i don't get ill i don't have any physical limitations normally but, oh, this year I'm suffering. I've got some swelling, some edema in my feet. There's one foot especially. It's giving me trouble. And I've had just some issues. And I'm like, what? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell is going on? What is the matter? I had time to achieve my goals. I had the energy to achieve my goals. I had, I thought, the focus to, keep, to, to do it. I thought I did everything right. What in the world was going on? I was really getting depressed about Lama's time. I was really seriously getting depressed. And then I met, if you will recall, I met Bird. Remember Bird? The crow, the little crow, the little fledgling crow that came to our door on the blue moon. I met Crow, the bird, bird the crow, and I started to see things in a little different way. You know, crows, I, you can't see out my window here, but crows like to build their nests very way up high in the sky. And we have a line of Italian cypress trees. I don't even know how tall they are. They're usually tall. And the crows love to sit at the very, very top because from there they can see everything going around them, right? They can see all the predators and all the, <laughs> both the predators and, you know, anything that is, um, <laughs> anything that they might want to eat or whatever they can see from up there but they they are sort of in charge and they're very territorial and they stay around the neighborhood well <laughs> uh if you're if you're following the story of bird bird came on the on the um blue moon and she stayed two weeks she two weeks she was here yelling at us all day for two weeks what he said we couldn't go out in the yard without her landing on us um, she just was crazy. She was, she just wouldn't leave. And we kept trying to encourage her to leave. Finally, after two weeks, she was gone. Not gone, but not here. You know, she was, she's around, she's taken residence with the other crows in the community. We are very happy to see that because she is a bird. Now for the third week, she came back a few times. She came back and left a few gifts for me at the front door and she our front door here is sheltered she had to come in on the porch to get them up to the door it was nothing that could have blown in or nothing that could have fallen in but the things that were deliberately placed we knew they were from her because of the very first gift she brought us was a blue ribbon I think I, I mentioned that in the last video well so we knew they were from her it was in the same place from time to time we we think we recognize her and we call out hello bird and she very often we'll call back. I'm not sure that it's her, but somebody is calling back when we say that. Um, since we met her, we've had some other encounters with some crows. We went camping, um, had a camping event over Labor Day weekend up in the high desert. And there are a lot of crows up there. And one crow in particular just was, seemed to be around all the time and calling to us all the time. And oh, we thought it looked a lot like bird. We thought that can't be bird. That's not bird. And my, But it was so funny that she was so persistent in calling to us constantly and being around constantly that uh, her friends started to say, are you sure you didn't bring that, that crow with you? 
so I'm not sure. But anyway, now I know it could be um, I have a, this connection I think we've made, and my husband and I both, both have made this very strong connection with crows, and I've been doing a lot of research with crows, and uh, and it's very important for this kind of thing, for this, I found out it was very, it was a very opportune time for that crow to come into my life. It was opportune for me because crows teach us something that I needed to remember to stop and watch, to stop and look, to stop and get a new perspective on things. And boy, did I need a new perspective. As a spirit guide, as a spirit guide, the crow is a good guide to help us perceive the subtle shifts of energy around in our environment. And you know, I'm an empath, so I'm very already, I'm already very much sensitive to the shifts, right? But often I'm out of balance. I'm often out of balance. And the crow is there to help me get that balance back. Balance, balance, Navon, balance, night and day, right? Oh, there's that word again. I had to say to myself, what had happened in my life to get me so out of balance? Because that's exactly how I have been feeling. Okay? And I thought about, I said, you know, we all do the same thing. I'm starting to see some of you on Facebook and some of you here on YouTube already saying, oh, Salwin's coming. Oh, here's my, and all the stuff you get in your witchy halls and you're all getting ready for Salwin. And I understand nobody loves Salwin more than us witches. We love Salwin. But, no, not yet. Not yet. Do not run forth into Samhain. First, we must stop and pause and get ourselves in balance. We have to get ourselves in balance. We're coming to the time when we're coming into the dark half of the year. The light's going to be less. We're going to be inside more. We're going to be turning into ourselves more, right? Doing activities, quiet activities in our homes, right? In close, maybe more closer quarters than we were used to being with, than the wide open spaces of the summer months. We need to get ourselves in balance. When you spend time following the wheel of the year, and you really get in touch with the Sabbath, you will start to realize you cannot go to the Sabbath, go to one Sabbath until you've completed the other one. You have to go in order through the year, right? We are not at Samhain. We have to pause at May 1. Because everyone has its own unique energies that we must use in order to live the life as we were meant to live. I have a card here, you know, I'm really into my tarot cards right now and I just couldn't help to notice because this card's been coming up a lot for people when I'm doing the readings right now and this is, I don't know if you can see it, this is the chariot and what's the chariot all about? What is the chariot all about? Balance, right? If those horses just flew any old way, flew forward, what would happen to that chariot? It would crash. There has to be a balance between the team. the team. The team of horses has to work together as a team. If one wants to go that way, one wants to go that way, they're going to go nowhere. They both have to have their eye on the prize. They both have to be focused in the same way. Balance. This is a good time. Look around you and see what is out of balance, okay? And I'm going to get to that in a minute on my life. Also, in small ways, you know, just a small way, here we have another card. It's been coming up too. This is the Six of Pentacles. I don't know if you can see it. I can't hardly see in the camera. There you go. Six of Pentacles um, is a good time reminding us uh, to give. To give. It's a good time to give. We, what we have, we've achieved something. Now we need to give back. Okay. Um, maybe we need to pay a debt. Maybe we need to correct a wrong. Something that's happened that we need to correct. There's a lot of things. That, can, that this could mean. And they have to do with the same concept of balance. Um, we started out getting ready for, I, in my home here, me, I started getting ready for Maybon on 
Sunday, I think it was Sunday, the weekend, when we were getting into the new moon, when we were having the new moon, the new moon, beginning projects, beginning projects. What project would I, was I beginning? If you saw me on my Facebook, you saw that I had, <laughs> I had a sheep all over my kitchen, right? I had a lot of wool that I needed to scour. Scouring is the first step of when you get wool from a sheep, you, it must be scoured. There is, it's called, it's to remove the dirt, remove the grease really from the sheep so that you can process it to spin. Um, and I had my whole kitchen <laughs> was full of this. This is what it looks like. I don't think you can see it, but it's really kind of yucky. This is still, uh, <laughs> the difference in it, I mean, it's clean. It, it still has a lot of vegetable matter that needs to be, vegetable matter, which is like straw and hay and things that need to come out of it. Um, and then it's, and I, but before we can do that, we have to call scour it. We have to wash it and in a special way so that we don't felt it. <laughs> And um, to remove manure and those kind of things, and also to remove um, the oil because the oil is very—it's called the grease, and it is very, very greasy. Okay, and then once it's clean, and this is what I'm doing now. Once it's clean, we're going to get it ready to spin. We have to process it. We have to cart it, and I'm going to show you a little bit about that if you're interested. I don't know, but the reason I brought this up, and the reason this has something to do with for me getting ready for it may one you know to get myself in balance I got the opportunity you know I'm going to go in a couple weeks camp, to another camping event and um, I got signed up as a part of, to be on a, a team for a worldwide spinning event where we're going to see which team of 25 can spin the most wool and it just happens to coincide with the with the camping event that we're having it'll all are my SEA friends and we're gonna we spin anyway when we're there we process wool and do those key things anyway so we thought this would be fun to do so I got out this wool to see if I had any well I didn't just have it I have this I have the equivalent really of two whole sheep that were not that were never scoured I have this this dark sheep it's got a black sheep but it's really brown and a um, and a lighter a white sheep I should have brought you and showed you that because it's really yellow looking, but it will be it will be white when it's scoured, when it's washed. But anyway, I had that and I have bags and bags and bags and bags. Every time I opened another box or another trunk and I have storage trunks and things, there's more bags and bags of wool should be ready to be spun. All of this wool, all of these things that I Oh, I couldn't wait to get into a project, right? Oh, I'm going to go buy a sheep. Oh, I love that sheep. I'm going to go buy another sheep. Oh, I'm going to buy some more wool. Oh, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to spin. And they've been sitting. And I want to tell you, this sheep, this sheep, this poor sheep has been sitting in my one trunk in a bag since 2003. 2003. That is 12 years this poor sheep has been waiting to get a bath. Now, lucky for the sheep, I did not. Well, I did not process it when I got it because because I was I've been using it for demos to to show to illustrate how to spin in the grease which is what it's called before it's been um, washed out of it because some people prefer that but anyway it's a good thing because it has preserved the fleece because other than that it would be all dry and unusable but you'll see when I get start to comb this it's going to be really nice I'm going to comb out this. I'm using a dog brush here to start it, but look how it's fluffing up right away. I don't know if you can see that or not. You see how pretty that is? It's all fluffy. And this little brush, it works the same as something called a flicker comb. It just it takes all the little matted areas out and any vegetable matter that's left in there, it's gonna pull it out. And then all the stuff that's no good, like that, the little cuts, it'll pull out. Anyway, so this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm like, oh, this is so fantastic. And what else is fantastic about this, because this is getting me, I'm going back and I'm looking at projects that I did not finish, that I had not finished in the past, right? How can we 
go forward when we have so much that is unfinished? That's the problem. We get so excited, we want to start. How many of us, how many of us are guilty of that, of the same thing, that we keep starting things and we never finish them? Okay. I'm looking around my house. Um, I know most people, uh, I think most of my friends are very crafty. Like I am, and if you are, you get, oh, you start all kinds of things. And then they just sit around. We have a, we have a real problem with people that are in the SCA, the my hobby group, because we are so involved in so many things, we have so many different unfinished projects left in our house, right? And you start to sit in your house come winter, and even in California, we have a little bitty bit of winter. And you're sitting in the middle of all these unfinished things. Everywhere you look, oh, there's those socks I started in it, I never finished. Oh, there's that, that scroll I started to do. Oh, there's that whatever. Oh, look, I never put the trim. And then we start looking around at the remodeling projects and we go, oh, we never finished the trim on this wall. Oh, we never painted the, the windows, you know, after we painted the room. Oh, and now the room looks like it could be painted again. You know, all of us have those kind of things going on in our life. How does it make you feel? When you look at those things, how do you feel? It's pretty depressing for me. It makes me feel pretty depressed. So Mabon is a time. Mabon is a good time to look at those things, all those unfinished projects, and say, you know what? I'm gonna finish what I started. I'm gonna have a, you know, I'm going to give myself a good talking to. I'm going to look around and say, what have I started that I have just neglected? I'm just pulling the locks. I know that not many of you are going to go out and get a sheep and car, but what you're wondering if I'm doing, I'm pulling the locks, each little bunch of wool to deal with at a time. And I'm trying to match up with other ones of the same length. You know, on, the, on a sheep, they're not all the same on different parts of the body, the sheep will be shorter or longer. And I'm good, and I mounted it here on my cards. These are called cards. Anyway, I can't tell you, just getting that wool out of that trunk, getting the wool out of the trunk and getting it in that hot water, you know, it was a lot of sad, I spent most of Sunday with my hands in hot water because you have to keep, you know, putting it in hot, your hot soapy water as hot as you can practically stand and you can't stir it. you got to get it down and get it wet and it's very hard on your, <laughs> on your hands and then you have to, um, and practically as soon as you put it in the water, the water turns brown so you have to, then you have to do another again. I think I do on each, on each batch, I think I did, um, I think I did three or four washings on each, three or four washings on each batch. Plus, then you have to do rinsing until the water is pretty clear. You know, I, I of course, I didn't have to completely wash it because it's gonna get washed a couple more times when it's the spinning process, it has to be washed a few more times, but anyway. It was a lot of work. <laughs> it's what I'm trying to say, it was a lot of work. And I tell you, I felt so much better. You know, just taking some kind of action to finish something that I had started before moving on. Finish something that I started. Getting ready for something. We all need to do that, right? We all need to do that. Get ourselves back in balance. So I hope that you will think of something that you can do when you're getting ready to celebrate, if you do, the Sabbath. There's some ways that has to be taken out of this. That you take a little bit of time. You know, it's, it's a harvest. Yes, it's a harvest and it's a good time. I think uh, Mabon is also called the Witch's Thanksgiving. So if you're gonna have a, like a little feast or something, that's really great to celebrate the harvest. Um, but maybe you can keep some balance of that when you're celebrating your good fortune and all things that you can have. 
It's a good time to do charitable things or give, you know, donate to a food bank or something. Some of your excess, if you have that, if you're lucky enough to have excess or whatever. Balance, keeping things in balance. Externally, keeping things in balance. Internally. Okay, before I go, I just want to show you a little bit what I'm going to do because this is. In case you're interested, I don't know if you're interested or not, but I have that wool put on that card, on this card. I'm going to take another card, and I'm just going to comb it. Oops. And I'm going to try to line up the fibers. It's sort of like combing If you have a pet and you've ever used a furminator, you know what I'm talking about, right? How the fur keeps coming and coming. Well, with this, this is sort of an epic fail on this. Wait a minute. I'm trying to get the teeth to take hold. Anyway, when you're when you are when you're brushing one of your pets with a furminator, you end up with more hair than the pet ever had in the first place. Well, that's sort of what happens with a sheep. You can imagine if you're come if you're if you're <laughs> if you're um, going to brush a sheep. You see how fluffy the yarn gets? I mean, it's just absolutely incredible. And it's very fluffy and it's very weak, right? So what is that gonna do for anybody? You're not gonna be able to make anything out of that. And I'm trying to get them all to sort of go in the same direction a little bit. Not necessarily the same direction, but they're all nice and fluffy. So I have all the card, the wool there. And then I'm gonna take it and wind it and just roll it off of here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm just rolling. This is called a roll bag. And I'll show you, I have a whole bunch finished. Oh my, I've been doing this for a couple of days. I'm just getting it lined up. And then when I go to spin, I'm going to be pulling it out of here. And I'll show you that a little later. But I'm going to show you. I have tons and tons I've been making. I've got several of these big bins just full. They're full of these <laughs> roll eggs. You see them? I don't know if you can see them or not. Just full of them. Ready to spin. So that's my Maybon. I would love... Love, 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 love to hear what you're going to be doing for May 1 this year, if anything. Or you're just going to rush, rush, rush into that one. Please try to resist the urge. <laughs> Please try to resist the urge. Stop. Stop. If only for a few days. And rejoice in May 1. Thank you for coming to my channel. I am Rebecca. I wish you blessings.